So the, the ACLU about 10 years ago determined there was some really uncouth things happening with the watch list and they tried to get into it. All their FOIA requests were designed, denied and they ended up filing a lawsuit against the FBI and they gathered more than 13,000 pages of information that was denied. Um, from that, they discovered that a huge category of non-investigative subjects was on the watch list. Again, why would you do that? Why would you claim someone's a terrorist, but you're not going to investigate them? Because they know they're not terrorists. So this is simply a way for them to track them, and it helps to justify to sheriff's office, police departments, and first responders, oh, this person's name's on the watch list. Don't treat them. Don't help them. Nine, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And welcome, independent researchers, skeptics, and all of humankind, the shadow citizen. Shadow citizen will explore the shadows of an alternate reality. Your host, Rachel L. McIntosh. Everybody, we made it through another week. Today, I have a very interesting guest. This guest, I picked him because, you know, you go online. I've been going online now since, I don't know, forever. And you see things about people, you know, they've got burns on their face and it looks really tragic. And what the heck's going on with that? And you say like, oh, these people are targeted. They were targeted with, you know, do or do, you know, these different terms they'll use. And it's like, uh, you know, I don't know if this is true. So today I found out that, well, today I'm going to be talking with Richard Lighthouse. He is a, a board member over at this group called Targeted Justice. And somebody had told me a while ago to look into this group, but that's when I looked at the pictures. I was like, oh man, it's people with burns on their face and stuff. I was like, you got to be kidding me. They're really burning people's faces off. But then I went to Washington, DC. I saw some bumper stickers stuck on telephone poles about it. And then I came back here to Rhode Island where I live and a couple more instances came up. I said, you know what? I got to look into this situation. So we have Richard Lighthouse here today. He's going to tell us about targeted justice. So Richard Lighthouse, welcome to the show and please introduce yourself and then we'll start this whole interview. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for inviting me to your show. Um, my name is Richard Lighthouse. Uh, I work with a group called Targeted Justice. Uh, we have a website, targetedjustice.com. Um, our group first started in uh, late 2017. And we are representing and supporting targeted individuals all over the world. Uh, first question we usually get is, um, what is a targeted individual? Um, a targeted individual, we've got a definition on our website under the uh, homepage. But a targeted individual is someone who's been selected by uh, certain government agencies, such as the CIA, the, the FBI, the DIA, which is the Defense Intelligence Agency. And um, these people are placed into a harassment program. Um, there's basically uh, an experiment, a very, very grisly experiment. Um, unfortunately, there are elements within our government, which we refer to as a deep state, that are very corrupt, unfortunately. And these groups are going to extremes to try to silence criticism of certain government programs and certain government efforts. And we've documented a lot of that on our website. Um, there, there are basically three elements to the program and I'm, I'm simplifying somewhat because it, it gets actually fairly complex, but there are diagrams on our homepage. I encourage folks to look those up because they're, they're very self-explanatory. Um, so among our more than 3000 members are, um, people that are uh, harassed with what we call gang stalking. What that means is fusion centers 
uh, all over the United States, and there are fusion centers in Europe and Asia as well um, that are organizing and directing harassment of citizens. Many of these people are political activists. In my case, I'm a government whistleblower. That's the reason that I believe I was targeted. Um, and sometimes random people are chosen. And unfortunately, it can be um, so disturbing for these people that some of them end up committing suicide. It involves um, isolation of the person by controlling members of the family and turning the family members against you. That's probably the most psychologically disturbing aspect. How, how, I'm sorry to interrupt. How do they do that? How do they turn a family member against you? So everyone in the United States. So if you look, um, <clears throat> a summary of our main message is number one, um, everyone in the United States, and it appears to be most of the world, are being tracked by certain satellites. And these satellites are called GPS satellites. And they are the latest technology. All of this is done with a top secret clearance. Um, the operations are based out of Schriever Air Force Base uh, near Colorado Springs. It's a deep underground military base. Um, and they have approximately 10,000 people that work at this base. Um, it is the largest Air Force base in the world that does not have a runway because none of the things they do operate with operating aircraft. It's all done operational satellites. They have uh, more than 190 satellites under their direct control. They track the precise location of every U.S. citizen by bouncing a microwave beam right here on the top back part of your head. And if you place your hand there firmly, put your knuckles right above it, you can actually feel the microwave pulses. They're about once per second. Everyone in the United States is tracked. Every person that I have tested with my own hand, I can feel the microwave pulse. And I try to teach people to check this themselves. And that's not your heartbeat you're feeling because there's not enough skin uh, and, and blood vessels in that thin layer of, of your scalp to actually produce a heartbeat. So that pulse that you feel, it feels like a pulse and then it fades and a pulse and then it fades. But that's actually a microwave beam that comes from a um, Lockheed GPS tracking satellite. The and, and these are incredibly precise. Um, we know from uh, a, web, um, a website called GNSS, which stands for Global Navigation and Satellite Systems. Yes. The accuracy is better than one centimeter. It, it, it is extremely precise. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this technology has been used for more than 30 years. Um, unfortunately, the, the CIA funds this under what's called an unacknowledged special access program. And the U.S. Space Force operates these satellites. Okay, yeah. Um, so um, very, very um, disturbing program run by our government. The, um, there are a number of microwave weapons in orbit. We, we call them vercators. The patent, you can look this up, is U.S. patent number 4345220. And it's a microwave weapon that was designed and built under an Air Force contract back in the early 1980s. The inventor is a man named Donald J. Sullivan, and uh, he worked with the Air Force Weapons Lab under a contract to develop these weapons. These weapons produce a microwave scalar beam. In other words, this is a, a new type of technology that operates under a very um, mysterious wave. It's called a scalar wave. And, and Nikola Tesla actually described these in some of his early experiments 100 years ago. Um, they remain not well understood, but the Air Force knows how to emit, divine, design um, weapons that can emit a scalar beam. And it's, it's very much, if you want a picture, it's like a laser beam that's about a half an inch in diameter. And it produces a perfectly straight line. And it's, it's called collimated. So if you take the, the, the microwave, the invisible microwaves from your microwave oven, and then focus it into a beam, that's essentially what this is doing. So it, it doesn't operate at the exact same frequency. It, 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 that frequency varies. We, we've measured it repeatedly at around 3920 to 3930 megahertz. Okay. Um, and the tracking frequency that they use on the top of your head is around 3600 to 3700 megahertz. So these two frequencies are very high in the spectrum, but if you can imagine back in the early 1980s, 
when they first designed and launched these systems into orbit, those were very high frequencies. They're not very high frequencies now, and there's a lot of commercial equipment to get can measure these. But in the early 80s, no one had equipment that could measure uh, and and surveil these types of frequencies except for government agencies. Um, so can I ask another question? Sure, sure. Um, now, if we can, now, if the, if the government can do this to its own citizens, are they doing it to enemies? Is that why it was developed or was it developed specifically for us? Do you know? It is, it is, it is apparently part of the deep state plan to monitor, track, and surveil everyone on the planet. Oh, okay, great. The, the, they, they aren't particular just to U.S. citizens. We have found that this is a global program. Um, about a year ago, I counted more than 60 countries that have sent us emails from individuals saying they're also being attacked in these similar methods that we've described. On how, how, do you, uh, how do you assess that these people are well in the head? Like how, I mean, obviously you know that this exists, but these people, like you said, their family members have turned against them. People are probably like, you're crazy. How do you assess that the person isn't actually crazy? So um, Dr. John Hall provided a, a, an excellent reference and uh, he's a friend of mine. I, I, uh, he has now retired from um, his medical work and still lives in San Antonio. But his best explanation when I brought up that very similar question was, we know from psychiatric and psychological testing that there's a variety of drugs that will work on people who are um, classified lots of, there's lots of different classifieds. If you go to the, the DSM, the latest version of the DSM, there are numerous categories that they try to put these people into, but they found that you can try all these different lithium and, and Prozac and all these different drugs that they try on. There is not a single drug that has been found to stop the symptoms, not even one. So this is the first case of psychiatrists claiming that there's a category of people that they think are either crazy or delusional and they use lots of labels on it. They have not found a single medicine that will stop the symptoms. That strongly suggests the symptoms are real. Hmm. Okay. So, so then what uh, happens? Say, say, let's just use me as for an example. So I call up or I, how, first off, I get in touch with you at the website, at the yes. target. Okay. See. So person feels like they're targeted and you what's the typical targeted complaint when they contact targeted justice we, we have th three major three main complaints i should say and there, there are lots of secondary um the first one is the gang stalking you know when you're being bullied at work or on the street or by your neighbors and constantly harassed and monitored we get the horn honking we've had we have an individual here in in uh houston area who experienced harassment through a group that's called Citizen Corps. And many of them work for the fire department or the police department. And where he was living, the fire trucks, the ambulance, every time they drive in front of his house, they'd honk the horn repeatedly. So it was coordinated, it was organized, it was deliberately done by fire department, police department, ambulance, first responders. We're all told when you drive past his house, honk the horn. And he's got it on video. Just time after time after time, they drive in loud hordes right in front of his house. So it was a coordinated harassment campaign. And he's got it all on video. It's very obvious. Um, so he's currently um, uh, dealing with a court case and hoping to bring some of this out. We have examples of more than 200 court cases on our website. Uh, unfortunately, none of those have been successful. So one of our main um efforts here is to develop a class action lawsuit to, to, to raise awareness and to try to prosecute those that, that are responsible. So that was a segue. So there's, there's the gang stalking, there's the directed energy weapons that, that I've just described. And there's a, another thing that's very debilitating to approximately two thirds of the targeted individual community. And it's called voice to skull or V2K. This is a a technology that was actually developed in the early 1960s by a scientist by the name of Dr. Alan Frey, Fry, and it's called the Fry effect. And they can literally take this microwave beam and point it anywhere on your skull, and you will you will be the only one that will hear the voices that, that come through it. So you stand there and say, there's somebody cussing me out and calling me horrible names 24 hours a day. You cannot switch it off. 
There's no firewall for your mind. And the technology is very real. Um, they're using the same technology on every U.S. citizen as a subliminal message. It is broadcast from cell towers 24 hours a day. Uh, very disturbing. And, and a judge, a federal judge has already ruled that subliminal messaging is illegal because it's an invasion of privacy. Yet we still have not convinced enough of the public that this is real, that everyone in the United States is technically a targeted individual. Your location is being tracked very precisely and they're beaming messages at your, your head subliminally 24 hours a day. And um, there was a scientist by the name of Dr. Ross Adey, A-D-E-Y, you can look him up. He worked for the CIA many years ago, back in the 1950s and 1960s. There's a class action lawsuit in Canada right now that involves this man because he did hor horrible, horrible things to a whole class of Canadian citizens where he did these microwave tests on them, fried their brains and was able to program them just like you program a computer using these techniques of subliminal messaging into the mind. You can create a secondary personality that can be switched on and off like a button. Class action lawsuit right now in Canada that's, that's trying to address this CIA funded doctor. And um, he did grisly experiments. He bragged once that he could turn anyone into a serial killer. Oh, well, that's, a, yeah, that's a, something to be proud of, I guess, right? Well, yes. So it, very disturbing. But no, this, this, so by 1954, we have the declassified files from 1954 from the CIA. They perfected mind control in 1954. This was before John F. Kennedy was murdered, before Robert F. Kennedy was murdered, or Martin Luther King. They had perfected the ability to mind control anyone and turn them into a killer. Very okay, suitable now, for intelligence persons. All right. Now, is you said it's coming from the cell phone towers right now. Could yes. this also be related to the cell phones that everybody has? I don't use a cell phone like at all. So I, I'm, in, I'm interested in the cell phone thing. Does, is a cell phone, does that have it? But the TV, the TV is, it's just from the cell phone towers? It is primarily from the cell phone towers. They can also emit messages from satellites as well because they're tracking you very precisely. So that same wave can be act as a carrier wave to carry messages at your head 24 hours a day. Um, it can be used um, to say, hey, vote for this person over and over and over. Yeah, again. that was going to be my next question. Do you think this happens during elections? Because Personally, this last election, in my mind, literally, I felt like I was living through psychological warfare, watching people just go, oh, they were lost, in my opinion, lost their minds in the last election. The, it, the, the, there are noticeable behavioral changes. So um, your earlier question that I, I don't think I answered was, how can they manipulate the family members? It's done with subliminal messaging 24 hours a day coming from cell towers. I've tried, I, I brought this up in a, in a number of diagrams and I've talked to many of our members about this and most people can actually feel it. But if you'll, if you'll circle your arm around, the, the microwave beams are projected at the center of your head and you can actually feel the heating in your knuckles right in this area. When you hold it between your head and a cell tower, you'll feel a pulse right here on your the, the, the heating actually, you can feel it in the cartilage of your knuckles. It's very sensitive there. And you can go all the 360 degrees around you and feel the microwave. You can pick out where a cell tower is, direct locations. Every cell tower within several miles of you is broadcasting a beam at your head and sending you subliminal messages. Most people are not aware. We've recorded some of these. We, you can actually get a microphone and point it at a cell tower and it will demodulate the voice. And these, some are horrible messages saying you hate yourself, you're fat, you're ugly. Broadcast 24 hours a day. And, oh and particularly, God. yes, this is very real. We've recorded these messages. We've got some on our website. This is, this is not just happening to targeted individuals. Everyone in the United States is being precisely tracked and being hit with subliminal messages 24 hours a day. Or just that alone, you know, that just that alone should you, a class action suit. Oh, here's the other thing. How, if, it, if you definitely establish that this is all coming from cell phone towers, how is it that we can't take those down? Well, we can. I, it doesn't I mean, matter. Uh, They're putting up all the satellites, he said. That's, it, it can also be done through satellites. Unfortunately, the, the satellites run out of capacity. So there's... 
um, a single cell tower can emit and track millions of people. And of course, that, that's way more capacity than what you need. Um, you know, I, I live in the Houston area. And so at any given moment in a, in a large urban area, there's going to be a dozen cell towers that are within distance of your cell phone right. and can point messages at your head. So it, it, in the satellite world, though, there's um, these GPS tracking satellites. I believe there's approximately 30 in orbit at any given time, and they cover the entire planet right. by, by doing unique rotations with a group of satellites. They can cover there are always at least four satellites that can see the top back part of your head. So these, these are approximately 12,000 nautical miles above the surface of the earth. And so based on that, and they move at a um, very slow pace, there's uh, uh, a website called um, uh, in the sky.org and it's got hyphens in between the words okay. and it'll give you a map of all the GPS satellites that are currently over your head right now. And you can see that there's always at least four that can see the top of your head anywhere in the world. So you cannot hide from these satellites. Okay. So is there, you can't, so is there anything you can do to shield yourself from the messaging? I mean, you t always have to hear about the people in their tinfoil hats, but is there anything you can wear or any if this is going on that prevalent, somebody must have thought of a way to shield themselves if they knew this since back decades ago. There, is there a way to shield yourself? Um, we have tried, unfortunately, I, I consider myself a scientist and, and a mathematician, and I have a master's degree in engineering from Stanford University. I previously worked at NASA, so I know a great deal about um, certain types of technology, particularly aerospace technology. We have tried shielding using many different materials. Uh, I've constructed many different boxes and measured the signals inside and out. Unfortunately, the scalar beam is, is very unique because it, it doesn't go, it doesn't operate like a sine wave, like most your radio frequencies, TV frequencies, uh, microwaves generally are a sine wave. Yeah. A, a scalar wave vibrates in the direction of motion. And that direction of motion is like a very thin silk wire. If you can imagine one that is so fine and so small, it can literally penetrate an, ab an atom and never touch anything in the atom. Um, Tesla once said that he hit the scalar waves he was experimenting with could go through the entire earth and never touch anything. Wow. That's how wow. you cannot That's imagine. Awesome. Wow how fine a scalar, a simple scalar wave can be. And so it can easily penetrate any type of shielding you put up. The problem that makes it so painful initially when you're targeted, the first few months are what they call the break-in period. And it's designed to soften up the target. Now, this, this is words that if you go to our um, gang stalking tab on our website, we actually have the training manual that is used to teach agents and operatives how to gang stalk and harass somebody. And one of the mentions in that training manual is how the first few months they like to terrify, traumatize to the maximum extent possible to neutralize this person and get them to lay down and shut up. And, and on, on many people, it's very effective. Um, the microwave beams can be extremely painful. I, I'm talking about on the ground in a fetal position, screaming in pain, and there's no way to hide from the scalar beam. What it does is it drags like a boat wake. It drags our ionized particles through the atmosphere. And that's what actually causes the pain. The scalar wave goes right through your body. But the particles that it drags along with it, charged particles in the atmosphere, impact your head and will penetrate to certain depths and are extremely painful. So I've got a diagram on the website under the, the section called scalar weapons. Um, but this is what cause, causes so much pain. And if I encourage folks to look at the tab called microwave burns. We've got dozens of pictures of people that are burned all over their body. And it, the so pictures are disturbing. I caution you, but these come from satellites and cell towers most of the time. How uh, would a person know that though? Because they've already been through this kind of process of being softened. And now they're like, something's really going on or it, all this. Cause I, if I had something on my skin, I'd be like, wow, I'm going to go to the dermatologist. Well, how would they know that this is coming from somewhere else? Well, the, um, the, the, bar, the, the, the targeting is extremely precise. They can hit the same location. Uh, you'll, you'll notice a lot of our burn pictures are of lower legs and feet 
for whatever reason, they find that to be particularly um, sensitive and hurtful. At the same time, many people feel the need to cover up. They don't want to tell anybody they're being burned because then they have to try to explain it. And doctors have already been told the DSM manual says these people are crazy. Well, when you show them burns on your body, the, the doctor is baffled. He's like, I never say anything like this, but I still think you're crazy. So it's, it's, sure, it's, why not? it's a catch 22. Out, right? that, yeah. It's a catch 22, but the microwave burns are very real. Some of them happen all, almost instantly, like in a matter of seconds, we have a, um, a person and I, I'm not going to use any names that lives in Arizona. that has been burned more than 20 times on her face. And um, I sympathize with her deeply. Unfortunately, this, this is, this is not an isolated case. We've got dozens of pictures of people that are being burned. It's, it's the most compelling evidence that we have is to show congressmen, and we did this in the summer of 2019, we visited more than 300 offices of congressmen and senators in Washington, D.C. We showed them this, these pictures. They were, many of them were shocked and appalled, and we told them the CIA is behind this. The reaction you get from congressmen is just one of, I'm not going to get involved in that. I know better than to mess with the CIA. They're, and they're scared. They don't want to help you. <laughs> but now, could you go to your local people, your local officials? I'm, I'm guessing they would know nothing about this, but you'd think there'd be some somebody more local. Or than Unf local. Unfortunately, the... There, there's a there's a, there's a patent called remote neural monitoring, and right. and we've got it listed on our website. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall the, the precise number, but it describes in detail how they can read your brain waves by intersecting two signals in your brain, and there's a differential that's created by your brain waves, and they can read that back from a cell tower or a satellite, and over a period of weeks or months, they can literally read most of the thoughts of your mind. People are very disturbed at this, and even I was very skeptical after I was being assaulted. I was very skeptical that this is real, but for, for, for example, um, we've, had, we've had targeted individuals come to us and say, I'll be looking for my keys, and they'll tell me where my keys are located. Oh, oh my God! Wow! And they they can re, they can read your subconscious mind and re, and recall where you left your keys and tell you where it's at. There's a, we've also found there's a delay between a subconscious thought and when it reaches your conscious mind, and that delay seems to be about six or seven seconds. That's enough time to bounce a signal off your head and know. Oh, I'm going to reach for my coffee cup. And, and get, again, and before you can even touch the coffee cup, they respond back. You don't need that. It'll make you fat. This is the type of harassment that D2K does to individuals 24 hours a day. You cannot imagine the, the, the debilitating effect of being criticized 24 hours a day. Now, here's my next question. If you're being harassed like that, is it a literal person? I noticed you're drinking from your coffee cup. Yeah. Is it a little person harassing you or is it a computer algorithm? What, what is that? I can't imagine somebody's with you 24 seven, just watching and listening to your brain. What happened there? What is that? that? That's a good question, Rachel. So what we found is that there is a software program that the government, that Adobe, the Adobe software company developed a software called Adobe Voco. And with a small sampling of any person's voice, the software program can mimic very precisely the, their entire voice. The inflections, even stutters or lisps can be precisely uh, reproduced by the software. So there was a woman in, uh, I want to say it was back around 2015 or so, she believed that President Obama was talking to her through the V2K. So what what the CIA had done is sampled President Obama's voice using Adobe V2, uh, Adobe Voco okay. and was broadcasting at this woman's mind. And she honestly believed that President Obama was directing her to do things. She ended up getting shot trying to enter the White House. Oh, I remember This really that. happened. This really happened. Yeah, I remember this, that. Okay, so they can literally sample anyone's voice. Now, what they do to TIs typically is they'll take your... Um, your your old spouse, your your divorce, they'll take your old spouse's voice, mimic it, and use it to harass you. 
Oh yeah, that's a good one. Sure. That would be good. Yeah. So that, that's one of the typical complaints we get. So many women will come to us and say, it's my ex-husband. It's my ex-boyfriend. He's the one that's harassing me. And you ask them simple questions. Does this person ever take bathroom breaks or eat? And they're like, that's right. It's 24 hours a day. Well, how does he talk to you 24 hours a day? That's a computer. That's not a person. And you have to walk them because they are absolutely convinced that their ex-husband is the one that's behind it. And you have to explain them, no, there's a software right. program that can mimic your ex-husband. And all they do is type in the commands. Well, the other thing too, is that that person obviously has been emotionally you know, scarred by this person. So their body, their, uh, their psyche, whatever you want to call that, is able yeah. to absorb that as a real thing, mm -hmm. right? So in, mm -hmm. like we were talking about elections, so many people in this past election have so much, they really brought, the marketing brought the emotional level up quite a bit. So I do think that was the part of the softening that they were able to get people really emotional about something. So they were able to accept whatever messaging. Is, does that sound about right? Yeah, that's, that's a very good point, Rachel. So um, one of the things that the, the government has been leading is there are societies, organizations, particularly in electronics, it's called IEEE. They're a very famous foundation worldwide. Um, the CIA has been planting moles and agents to manipulate the development of standards that benefit the CIA. For example, your screen has a flicker rate. Your TV screen and your computer screen has a flicker rate that is designed to place you into a trance. It induces a trance, which makes you more suggestible, more receptive to anything they broadcast at you by putting you in a light trance. So LED lights, fluorescent lights have been designed deliberately to flicker at a rate that designed to induce a, you into a trance. This, this yeah. has been going on for more than three decades. I'm that smiling developed so it. hard. I'm smiling right now. You see, say this because um, previously, I want to say, I don't know what year it was, about like probably eight years ago now, we moved to a new location and the electric company came out. And they changed all my light bulbs. They're like, oh, welcome to the neighborhood. We're going to have all these energy efficient light bulbs. And they changed all the light bulbs in my house. And they used different types of these light of efficient light bulbs, right? And they're all different types. They weren't the same type. The very next day, I got, I couldn't even walk. They, they were, and I, didn't know, I really didn't know what was going on. I called my mother. I was like, oh, mom, I, just, I can't even walk. She's like, what happened? I was like, I don't know. What's different in the house? What's going on? I said, well, they came and they changed the light. Who, who changed the light bulbs? I said, the electric company. She was like, well, let's get those out of there. She brought a big ladder into the house. She's changing all the light bulbs back. The next day after that, I could walk again. So I don't that's, doubt that's what you're saying. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. I have, I have not heard that before, but I, uh, we are aware of the developments in the, the, the light fixtures and the lighting, the screen flicker. And I, I encourage folks to be aware of that. So if you catch yourself being induced into a trance to where you're hypnotized by your TV screen or your computer screen, that's, that's, it's very deliberate. So it's also part of our main message that um, the CIA calls this an unacknowledged special access program, which means it's highly classified and they will never admit its existence, even to the president, they won't, won't admit its existence. So the way the security classification system works, I got this from a man named uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, and I, I strongly recommend his show. Yeah. He did a presentation, I believe it was in November of 2018, where he did how the deep state works. And he presented this in Washington, DC. And he has had more than 600 whistleblowers from the deep state come forward and give him information about how these uh, dark programs work. So there are approximately 36 levels of security clearance above top secret. The, 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 these programs are highly siloed. So just because you have a top secret clearance doesn't mean you're allowed into these programs. You have to be read into them and briefed. And um, they're very threatening the, the way the government has set these up. Um, they tell you, you, you will be working on this program. You will not tell your boss what you're doing. You will, you were, or your hours will be accounted to this. You will not tell your boss what you're doing. You will not tell the president what you're doing because he doesn't have the security clearance to hear what you're working on. This entire security clearance system was set up by Nelson Rockefeller when he was vice president under Gerald Ford. And the whole goal of the program is to prevent information getting to the president or congressman. 
the way they've set, set up these security classifications is very deliberate. The president of the United States is about level 17. So <laughs> there's, there's about 17 or more security clearance levels above the president that he's not allowed to know about. This, this type of program is grossly unconstitutional. We've got to sh tear down this program. It's, 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 it's a, astonishing that senators and congressmen that vote on bills for the benefit of the American public do not have access to the top secret intelligence and these security programs that are going on 24 hours a day. It's very disturbing. Yeah, I mean, if the president can't know about it, why does local yokel representative from Rhode Island need to know about it, you know? So, oh, wow. Back to, okay, so back to our hypothetical person that's going to contact Targeted Justice. They go to the website and they fill out, uh, is there a form or an email or a telephone number that they call? We've got, uh, we've got e email addresses. Uh, one is called Targeted Justice Membership at ProtonMail.com. We also, if you're interested in joining our lawsuit, if you're a targeted individual, it's uh, TJ lawsuit at use.startmail.com. Either one of those email addresses will get to us. We, there, there is a tab on our website that allows you to join as a member. You don't have to be a targeted individual, or you could look at everyone in the United States as a targeted individual. So we encourage folks to join our membership. It's free. Um, if you would, if you are a TI and want to take action, we encourage you to join our class action lawsuit. There's a tab for that as well. Okay. Now I do know that you, um, whistleblowers, you brought the thing about whistleblowing whistleblowers. I've seen to me, and I don't know if this is true. It seems to me there's different levels of harassment. Like if there's a corporate, a corporation that you've whistleblowed against, it seems to me that they actually come in your house and gaslight you. I've seen these stories where they, they're literally in your house and doing weird things in your house. Then this other thing that you're talking about is from satellites and cell phone towers. That seems like it's from a government. Are there different types of harassment? You said that the one about blowing the horns in front of the house. So, yeah. and the, the other thing I can't get over is that it's a real person. You pretty much answered that. You said a lot of this stuff is a computer algorithm. Um, so tell us more about these. You, I, I still went to the website and it looked like there might be some celebrities that get har harassed and it might be some yes. yeah so tell me about the type of people that can because i bet you a lot of people listening to this right now are like that's so crazy it, i would never happen to me i don't even know what they're talking about tell us about the different types of people this happens to so um typically and there is no stereotypical or label oh, that, that we found we found um random um random induction into the program. So you don't necessarily have to have done anything wrong because they're looking to expand their experimental base. Um, the goal, I, I strongly recommend Dr. John Hall's book called Guinea Pigs. He goes into detail. He's one of the first people uh, that, that had professional credentials that, that wrote a book describing the gang stalking and the satellite tracking. His first book was called Satellite Terrorism in America. And his second one was Guinea Pig. So he, he's basically based on the number of people that had contacted him over approximately 20 years now, he has broken down the program into its elements and tried to under, better understand what's going on. So I recommend him as a, as a highly credible source. There are a number of similarities with the, um, the diplomats in Cuba and in China. We did we, uh, a, number, a couple of medical doctors, Dr. Beatrice Golem at UC San Diego was one of the ones that reviewed them. And uh, Dr. Um, Hoffman at University of Miami was another that reviewed the diplomats experiments. They, the National Academies of Science had came out with a statement saying, we've looked at the, this diplomat um, data we, def we definitely think they were attacked with microwave weapons, which Targeted Justice has been saying for several years now. These microwave weapons are real and they're using them to attack civilians. That's exactly what happened to the Cuban diplomats. The National Academies of Science, very prominent organization, and their scientists have said these people were attacked with microwave weapons and um, the microwave weapons are real. 
So that, that's, that's huge for us. So just to try to get to a medical doctor and explain you've got burns on your body and it came from a microwave weapon, the, the doctor's never heard of this. So of course, the, their first conclusion is going to add, send them to a psychiatrist. Right. And now how, how we've would got, the doctor treat that? I mean, I, I, how would they even know how to treat that? Right, right. So it, it, we, we've tried to isolate how much of the burns are due to ionizing radiation or non-ionizing radiation. And fortunately, we haven't gathered enough data to make a definitive conclusion on that. It can, does can appear- Can those types burn? I, I'm sorry, say that again. Can both of those types of radiation burn? I thought only one yes. type was really the burning type. Oh yeah. So uh, for example, in your microwave oven, that's, mm -hmm. that's non-ionizing radiation. Okay. But I guarantee you, if you put your hand in front of <laughs> a, a, a microwave emitter at 2450 megahertz, it will definitely burn you just like it'll burn water or, or cook food. Baked potatoes. So, sure, yeah. that, that's right. So, but it, it will definitely burn your skin if you put in front of that specific frequency, which is non-ionizing radiation. So ionizing radiation would be like that emitted by x-rays and gamma rays. Um, we've had a number of examples of targeted individuals saying that their burns occurred very rapidly, like within a matter of seconds. So they um, were driving in their car and um, pointing, driving westward, and just within three seconds, they felt a massive heat wave over their upper body. And hours later, their skin started to turn pink and then took bright red and started swelling up. And a, a particularly in individual in Arizona has had this happen more than 20 times. Her, her ex-husband is an executive at an aerospace company with connections to Schriever Air Force Base. Oh, wow, so, wow, wow. Okay. So it was easy to deduce where that was coming from. There, the, the nominate, there's a nomination form to put people on the watch list. And we've determined the majority of the people on the terror watch list are non-investigative subjects. Even though the FBI claims these are known or suspected terrorists, yet they have a category called a non-investigative subject. Now, why would you claim someone is a known or suspected terrorist, and you don't want to investigate them. Obviously, something doesn't add up. You're doing something else. <laughs> That's right. So this is how they track targeted individuals. They put them on the terror watch list. Right. Now, we have yeah. proof of that. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You go first, because I have a question about that. Go. You continue. Okay, so the, the ACLU, about 10 years ago, determined there was some really uncouth things happening with the watch list and they tried to get into it. All their FOIA requests were designed, denied and they ended up filing a lawsuit against the FBI. And they gathered more than 13,000 pages of information that was denied. Um, from that, they discovered that a huge category of non-investigative subjects was on the watch list. Again, why would you do that? Why would you claim someone's a terrorist but you're not gonna investigate them? Because they know they're not terrorists. So this is simply a way for them to track them and it helps to justify to sheriff's office, police departments and first responders, oh, this person's name's on the watch list, don't treat them, don't help them. So they are unknowingly participating in the harassment because they're told these people are terrorists and of course they're not. Right. Now, if they truly were terrorists, why wouldn't you arrest them and prosecute them? You know, why would you let these people wander the country if they were true terrorists? Uh-huh. Yeah, so, it reminds me of the last, uh, uh, as most people that watch this show know, I was involved with the Ron Paul, um, both his last two runs for president. And there was a terrorist watch list that came out generated for Ron Paul supporters and a couple other people. They put it, and I remember what after he dropped out of the race, I, I begrudgingly took my bumper sticker off my car. I was kind of sad. But the reason I did it is because I knew there was this watch list going around that included Ron Paul supporters. I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't need this in my life. So I took my, my bumper sticker off. I, I am also a huge uh, Dr. Ron Paul supporter. He actually lives just about an hour south of Houston and has a big fan base online. Lots of uh, bloggers support him. And I, I, I'm so glad that he's still very active and trying to get the word out about uh, a lot of these things that are happening. Um, so you, 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 you brought up a, you were going to ask a question about the, the that, watch that list. Was, yeah, that was the, that okay. was the, the point because okay. I knew there was this watch list that was being created. It was putting out, put out by those, um, those centers that you mentioned. 
Fusion yeah. centers, the fusion centers. There's at least one in every state. Here in Texas, we have, I think, six of them. Yeah. And these fusion centers are, are um, there was a Senate subcommittee investigation into them about 10 years ago. And, and Senator, um, Senator Tom Cotton uh, was on this committee. And Dr. Rand, uh, Rand Paul is on this committee at present. And they found out that the fusion centers were uh, abusing people's civil rights. They were gathering uh, suspicious activity reports on people without merit and without reasonable cause. Uh, and they got a, a very harshly worded letter from the Senate committee saying, Fusion Centers, you were supposed to be investigating terrorism. And all of the information we've seen from some of your Fusion Centers have nothing to do with terrorism. They, they, were, they were collecting people's names because they put a bathroom, a sticker on a bathroom wall. It, 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 trivial, trivial instances, and yet they file a suspicious activity report and put this person on a watch list, for God's sakes. Yeah. It's, it's outrageous some of the things that are happening at these fusion centers. They need to be dismantled, defunded, and shut down. They are the source of all the gang stalking based on the research that we've done. The, oh, the fusion centers, okay. The, the gang fusion centers. centers are, yes. Mm -hmm. Good information, excellent. Um, and is just for the normal person, is there a way for them to look at where, where the fusion center is in their state? Yes, you can, you can Google fusion center, of Arkansas, fusion center, of Colorado, and there will always be at least one in every state. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. These, they go to great lengths to try to hide. If you send a FOIA request to them, they'll deny it and say it is a private organization. Well, if it's 100% funded by the DHS, te technically that's not private. So um, we have found the documents on the DHS and FBA websites claiming that these are 100% funded by the government. And they use local officials, local sheriff's offices, local police departments to staff these um, centers. And they, we have found that there's at least one or more individual in these organizations that's called the intelligence supervisor or intelligence officer, generally works for the DHS or the FBI directly. Um, and these people, this is the excuse they use to block FOIA requests is, oh, this is intelligence, it's national security, you're not allowed to know about it. But really what they're doing is stalking and harassing, organizing these house break-ins, assault and battery, um, harassment, um, destruction of property, um, some very serious crimes that are deliberately organized by these fusion center groups, and we need it shut down. Okay, um, how many, here's my next question. How many people do you think work at, just make, I, maybe you don't know, it's gonna be a guess, are involved in this widespread spread over the United States in this whole, between the fusion centers, this, um, the Air Force Base, the technology companies that are enabling this? How, how many, it, it's, it's gotta be a huge number well, we, we estimated um, based on the data that we've received from the ACLU and the reports that come out of the FBI on how many people are actually named on the watch list. And unfortunately, oh, okay. we, we, we get five, five different answers from five different credible sources in the government and well, none of the like numbers the agree. Death count. Go on. Continue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, unfortunately, they will not give us an accurate number, but based on the, the numbers that the ACLU pro provided, we estimate there's about 1.5 million targeted individuals worldwide and approximately 170,000 here in the United States. Okay. It's odd that that 170,000 number cor correlates very well with the number of individuals that work with an organization called InfraGuard and another organization called Citizen Corps. If you add those numbers up, it almost equals 170,000. So it appears their plan is to have a one-to-one -one ratio of staffing at the fusion centers and for guard and citizen corps. So it's very odd that the numbers came up almost a one-to-one -one ratio. That is, that's, that is fascinating. That's pretty interesting. Wow. It's, I, I feel like I could talk to you all day. I'm so, I literally am so honored and feel blessed to have had this conversation. Um, is there anything else that we should let the listeners know about because we've been talking almost an hour but we can talk longer if you want i don't want to take up your time what do you think is the most important thing that people can do right now so they're not sitting at home going oh my gosh the cell phone tower is going to kill me what can 
we impart to them? So um, in my opinion, the, the, the most harmful thing that's happening right now is the sub subliminal messaging. Okay. But it, it is grossly illegal for them to track us using microwave pulses that clearly cause brain trauma. So an MRI was done uh, to these Cuban diplomats and they did find brain trauma. Even with that, or it looks like a concussion event, but there hasn't been a concussion event. Um, so it's clear these microwave pulses damage the brain. It causes memory loss, difficulty concentrating. Uh, we found that calcium supplements can can help with that because it actually depletes calcium from the brain. So we need people to be, be aware of the subliminal messaging. There are ways to block it. Your, your mind doesn't have a firewall. You have to put one up. So one method for doing that is to tell yourself, I will only react to constructive suggestions or alternately, I will ignore all subliminal messages. It, it appears to be the greatest at nighttime. So when you lay down and go to sleep, uh, once you're motionless, they can hit you with messages over and over and over again. And this is one of the methods they use to manipulate family members and turn family members against you. It becomes like a, a, a message that's repeated 10,000, 20,000 times over weeks of period until the message sticks. And unfortunately, your family members who are unaware this is happening can be manipulated and turned against you. And in fact, the way the program's set up, when they've identified a target, the first thing they do is go after the family member. So when the target discovers they are being attacked with microwave weapons, the family immediately goes, oh, you're crazy. That's the first response of the family because the family members were targeted even before the individual. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So this is a quite a coordinated. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I so I, I, to, to answer, to answer your question, the calcium thing, that's a big thing. We'll, we'll let, tell yes. people, keep up on that calcium, get the CalMag. Calcium supplements will help with yeah. uh, the memory loss and the difficulty concentrating. Um, water, we found that water is an effective shield against the microwaves. Water absorbs microwaves. So it's not a hundred percent shielding. It, it's probably something like 50% of water. Water pillows or Ziploc bags filled with water can help. But the main thing that people should know, the ordinary citizen should know is uh, put up a block in your subconscious mind. I will only react to constructive suggestions. Um, that, that can certainly be helpful. Or I will ignore all subliminal messages. Either one of those will work. I, I encourage the use of both of those. It does, it's not a cure-all, but it does seem to help. All right, excellent. Wow. All right. Mr. Lighthouse, you are a wonder of nature. I hope we get to talk again. And I know I'm going to have a lot of people asking questions. And what I'll do is I'll document them and maybe we can talk again and we can ask some questions that the audience thought of during this conversation. But thank you so much. And I, I go on. I know you want to say something. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I, I very much appreciate your time and your efforts, Rachel. You've, you've got an amazing guest list and, and people listen to you. They're responsive to you. And, and I'm so glad that you're active in the community and telling people what's going on. Oh, no problem. Oh, it's my, it's my absolute, absolute pleasure. I mean, what else am I going to do? All right. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great week and stay tuned. We're going to get through this all, all of us. Stay strong. Bye everybody. Shadow Citizen with Rachel L. McIntosh.